Drake, Drizzy Drake, Drizzy Drake came back and absolutely surprised everybody by dropping one of the best diss records of all time. Why do I say that? Because we all counted him out, myself included. I legitimately thought there was no chance Drake would have the gumption, the nerve, the temerity to say people's names and clap back, especially because Kendrick's been poking at him for ages. The Metro Boomin thing happened recently. The Future thing happened recently, which is really sad for me because being a big Future, big Future fan, big Drake fan, I uh, me, I always have loved their collaborations. I was looking forward more so to a fucking, what's that thing called? What Time to Be Alive number two. But as I think Joe Budden correctly pointed out one time ago, he always noticed there was an issue because ever since that Thames record, which features Drake and Future, there's been no replay of that record. They don't perform it. Thames has done a lot of tours, a lot of shows in the North America. Future and Drake don't come and perform and do this song. There's never been a sequel to it. So it just feels odd what happened. And now we know that Drake and Future had fallen out. Anyway, um, the Drake and, sorry, the Future Metro Boomin album comes out. Um, one track featured on there is like that. Um, amazing fucking tune. Great production. Metro fucking spazzed on that fucking tune. And Kendrick's got a verse right at the end where he goes at everybody and predominantly attacks Drake. And everybody was thinking, oh my God, Trent just set the, you know, set the fucking bar up. Let's fucking go. I was one of the people who thought the like that record was sweet, but it wasn't that bad that it would warrant a response. But I think because of what happened after the fact, because of all the people that were now aligning with Metro and Future, it did warrant a response. But I also was not surprised that it took Drake so long to reply because he's having to go at The weekend, Metro, Future, Rick Ross, Nav, um, ja Moran, you know what I mean? He's going at so many people at once because it seems that the whole industry is kind of turning against him. Why is anyone's you know opinion? But I think the record itself fucking slaps. So I'm going to play it because I absolutely love the record and we're going to break down some of my favorite lines in the record. So this is Drake um, push-ups. Um, this is a leaked record. It's not officially out on streaming yet at the moment. When it does appear streaming, it's going to be fucking fantastic. But this is Drake push-up and I fucking love this song. Hey, I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside America for now. The way you doing splits, oh, bitch, your better. pants might rip. What's going on there? Why is that for? Okay, one more time. Let's go back again. One more time. Let's go back again. Let's go fucking back again. Let's go. Hey, I could never be nobody number one fan. Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. You pussies can't get booked outside America for now. I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. By the way, I think that's an important bar to resonate with because a lot of people are saying, what's the beef that everyone has with Drake? I don't think it's that deep. I honestly do think it's more so just a jealousy thing because he's been on the top for so long. He's the real hit maker, right? When he jumps on records, when he features people, they usually go top 10, if not number one. So I think that that dominance from Drake, people just can't handle it anymore. It's just too much to take. He's not slowing down. He's not going on any kind of break. He did have a, he did have a time where he was like, oh, I've got my tummies. I've got a tummy ache because I've been taking half a perk, whatever it may be. But so far, he's been pretty resilient in that regard. He's, he, he's very active for a level of a star he is. He's very, very fucking active. He's always fucking dropping music, always performing. So I just think it's pure jealousy because he's the only one that's able to, you know, go to Europe and sell out shows, you know, do a ton of shows in the North America and sell those out. I'm sure if you go to South America, you'll fucking destroy. He hasn't even touched Africa yet. That'll be a fucking crazy situation. So he has a lot of opportunities to make money and to kind of just increase his fucking fame. Whereas the other guys, their ceiling is kind of being reached a little bit. And also Drake has the musical range. I mean, he does different genres. He jumps on different type of beats and he reached out to different people different types of the world whatever it may be so i just think that dominance is just getting annoying for some people to the point where they're like you know what enough we don't want to keep relying on this guy we don't want to keep going to him for number one records we want to be able to have a bit of room for us to kind of breathe because he's just overbearing he's number one he's all that people listen to our, all our girls listen to him all our family members listen to him he's just too omnipresent so it almost feels like you know 
that scene where fucking Caesar gets stabbed by everybody in the collar, you know, in the court, in the back and shit. They just had fucking enough of his role. And they're all cowardly, so they all kind of wait for one person to do it. And then they all jump in and kind of start stabbing him in the back. That's what it kind of feels like. But Drake ain't going out in easy, as easy as Caesar did. I'm the hit maker, y'all the pand on. Backstage in my city, it was friends on. You won't never take no chain off of us. How the fuck you be stepping with a size seven man zone? I love that. It's such a funny insult, by the way. How the fuck you big stepping with a size seven bands on? I love that. How can you be a big stepper when you're a size seven? <laughs> it reminds me of this time back in the day when I was, you know, in heavy in the London sneaker scene. And one guy that owned a sneaker store in London said he um, helped to, you know, Kanye to, you know, help to sell Kanye some shoes. And he said Kanye is really odd because he's got a complex about his shoe size. He says that Kanye, like, officially is like a size eight or something. But he always buys size tens because he wants to appear like he's got bigger feet because he thinks like you know guys with bigger feet, bigger schlongs, whatever. So this guy was trying to no, this, this is your size, your size eight, eight and a half, and he didn't want to take it. He's like, no, I'm a size fucking ten. So eventually, you know, Kanye gets Kanye's way, and he left there with a Jordan three in a size ten. Which, if you know anything about Jordan threes, you know they're fucking big. So he purposely bought a shoe that's already really big looking in a two biggest two sizes bigger than his actual shoe size so he could appear more quote unquote manly funny funny this the part with the bite nigga what's up i know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up extortion baby hope for red you been shook up this top so you drop it give me 50 likes a push up so that's a that's what i didn't understand at first but now i've heard that allegedly kendrick to get out of his deal with top dog allegedly had to give them 50 million and he also, they managed to put in a deal where they get 50% of whatever he makes with his new label, PL, PG something that he's doing now. And I think it's only him and Baby Kim on the, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the label, right? His cousin. But that's mad, isn't it? To get, out of, to get out of Top Dog, he had to give them 50 mil. This goes to show that black people do black people worse than any people, isn't it, right? You even see in the podcast world, right? In the podcast world, you see big podcasters like, you know, Mac World, like a Mac Wop and shit, um, you know, with with his show, The Apollo, refusing to give his friends even just $100 is like a gesture of being co-host on his show. And you also see Top Dog, right? Being this black-owned label, West Coast, um, you know, incredibly tied there to the streets, to the history of hip-hop over there. And, you know, for, for, for everything fucking, you know, for everything... um. Kendrick Lamar's did for that label, right? For everything he did to that label, why are they fucking? Why are they taxing him like that? Why would they tax him like that? For everything he's done for that label, why would they tax him like that? When he's like, you know what, I want to fucking leave now, but they're taxing him in a way where allegedly they get. They said, hey, you have to fucking give us fifty million to get out of your deal, and we're also going to take fifty percent of whatever you're making now going forward. That's what Drake is alluding to. Whether or not it's true or not is mad, but also it's a double on it's a triple on Tundra because it also lends back to that iconic video of of, of um Kendrick doing those uh the prison burpees right where he's like it's pretty good to be fair because they're very hard to do it looks easy but it's not hard it's really hard where like he does two push ups stands up you know the does the fucking fist to fist stance gets back again so it's a, it's a triple on Tundra in that regard amazing bar though. Hood, your last one brick, you really not on shit. They make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit. Pull your contract because we got to see the split. The way you doing splits, bitch, your pants might rip. And this is the best thing about Drake. The way you do splits, your pants might rip. These type of, like, he's the master at these type of diss records, but also making them fun and entertaining because you know this is going to be sung word for word in the clubs. You know girls are going to be twerking their asses when this type of bar comes up, screaming at the top of their lungs. He makes these type of records fun. He don't, he don't just get in a booth and just starts angrily airing somebody out. He's, he's still going to air you out, but he's going to make it a fun record so people can have a, a good time with it, they can bop to it, and it's got replay value. This is the hard thing about beefing nowadays. Beefing nowadays or diss records or whatever isn't what it used to be. It used to be back in the day, you could just like outbar somebody and that's how you win. Nowadays, it has to be entertaining. The entertainment factor is a big part of it. The rollout factor about it, the bars, like it's all part of the fucking. Ju and sometimes I think sometimes like sometimes depend like that's why maybe Pusha T was unique because Pusha T was one of the only people who really kind of gagged Drake because that's one thing. He being a a big Drake fan myself, you have to say he took the L on that one. Pusha destroyed him because he was able to make quote unquote fun records, make them quotable, make every line mean something too. Cause that's something that people don't give 
push your team credit for. Every line meant something. There was no throwaway. Every line was like a stab, 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 stab. Like he was going at him super hard. And I think Drake probably learned from that and did the same thing on this record. Every line is a diss. Every line could be seen as a diss. Um, he's revealing things. He's hinting at things. He's suggesting things. But he's like, hey, this is... And it's also very... It's also a bit of a... It's also kind of tame. Because you feel like he's purposely like, hey, I'm being nice to you right now. But if you do, if you drop something else, then I'm going to come with a fucking... I'm going to come with a fucking hammer. Are you ready for it? Okay, cool. You better do that motherfucking show inside the bitty. Maroon 5 need a verse. You better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Mm -hmm. Top say drop. You better drop and give them 50. Pip squeak, pipe down. You ain't in no big three. Scissor got you wiped down. Travis got you wiped down. Savage got you wiped down. Like your label, boy, you in a scope right now. I love that you mentioned that because I think there's a theory that, you know, the top three, top three thing. So far, we've never we've not got actual footage of Drake saying anything about top three. I think he's mentioned something about, you know, Kendrick and, and J. Cole being his peers at the top of the game. But I don't think he's mentioned this acknowledgement that we're in the top three. He probably thinks he's far above these guys, which I do believe. I think Drake is far above both of those dudes commercially, just in terms of ticket sales and shit and just, just too much. And I think the, the one thing to kind of note about it, as much as people wanna don't want to admit it, like, when the rap happens, when the Spotify rap happens at the end of the year, why is it that Ye and Drake are always in people's top list, even though people say they don't like Ye because of his political opinions and the White Lives Matter stuff and the Trump stuff? But at the end of the year, when it really comes down to collating and recording what people actually listen to day to day, it's Drake. It's Ye. It's the obvious people. It's, it's unfortunately it. So the, the lack of acknowledgement that he has for top three makes sense because there is no real top three when he's a number one guy. And that's probably the, the main reason why they all hate him. He's probably fucking all their girls, which is obviously annoying because I think all rappers share girls anyway. But he's probably taking them all. These girls are also talking very glowingly. And if Because imagine if you're the guy that secretly hates Drake and then the girl that you're fucking is talking about how nice he was. Oh, I met Drake. He flew me in a jet. He took me to the fucking mansion. Oh my God. Like just really talking glowing because she thinks you guys are friends, but you're not. And you're hating everything about it, but you can't show that you're hating because it's going to make you look like a hater so you kind of keep it in and then when the record comes that's when you kind of drop it so maybe that's what's happening here i don't know who knows and you gonna feel the aftermath of what i write down i'm at the top of the mountain so you tight now just to add this talk with your ass i had to hike down big difference between mike then and mike now Big difference between... Oh, yeah, come on, Drake is spazzing. What the fuck is this, a 20v1, nigga? What's a prince to a king? He a son, nigga. Get more love in a city that you find, nigga. Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some drums, nigga. That bit is going to be replayed at raves and festivals so many fucking times. And I think it's brilliant, too, because Metro Boomin, as much as I love him, he is quite sensitive and emotional. And I've never really understood why he has a problem with Drake. It, it, he's, he's, his one seems to be way more personal than the others. Just in terms of petty, sorry. Because I get the feeling like he just had a bad experience with Drake in the studio. And since then, he hasn't been able to let it go. Like a little tit for tat. Maybe Drake told him to move the drums over here and he didn't like it. The way he spoke to him, whatever. But I like that he gave him that, you know, cut out the beat and just reduced him to like a drum boy, which is obviously not true because Metro's one of the best producers of hip hop in all time. But to, to reduce him as like drummer boy is fucking incredible. <laughs> he really does take away any, anything he's ever achieved. You're just a drums guy. Shut the fuck up, man. Yeah, I'm the six guy, I'm the front runner. Y'all nigga manager was Charles little blunt runner. Clean a six and you boys ain't even come from it. And when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Can That's a good one though. Because the sex is kind of made up, but it's still basically saying, hey, you were from the hood, but once you made your money, you couldn't come back because, you know, you did some fuck shit in the hood. People want to get you. But I'm good in the hood because I'm the sixth god. Six, six, six. Cash flowing, able bread out here tricking. Tricking. Shit we do for bitches, he doing for niggas. Jets, whips, chains, wicked, wicked, wicked. Imagine shit he did for, shit he did for, for bitches, he did for niggas. That's funny, though, because a lot of them do it. I think Drake is also maybe guilty of it, right? This idea of, like, buying your friends, like, Pateks and, like, G-Wagons and 
Bentleys and stuff. It's like, bro, isn't that what you're meant to be doing for your side beach? Why are you doing it for the niggas? It's all odd, but I think that's just rich guy shit. It's all flexing shit. Maybe it's also tax write off shit. Who knows? But either way, I thought it was funny for him to make bring up and you know, maybe that's a future disc. Maybe it's a Travis disc. Who knows? Spinning like you trying to fuck. Boy, you tripping. Boy, you tripping. Drizzy chipping there. Probably got your bitch in there. I just got them done. Boy, don't make me at the chipping there. Rolling loud stage. I would turn. That was slick as hell. Shit will probably change if it be him. Start to kiss and tell. That could be kiss and tell line could be future sierra song obviously and it also could be travis scott in that they both have high profile baby mothers but they're also notoriously you know private about their relationship and what they got up to and the fuck shit's happened so he's just saying hey if i want to get the information about what you're doing behind the scenes it's going to be dark for you so chill out Hugs and kisses, man, don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every fucking chain I own next visit. Hey, I'll be with some bodyguards like Whitney. Top say, drop your little midget ass, better fucking. That's a really escaping bar. The suggestion here is that allegedly, allegedly, Kendrick's wife had an affair with one of his bodyguards. I don't know if they're separated or not, but that's the what he's suggesting. Now, to me, this is very interesting because we don't know anything about Kendrick's private life because it's very private and he's also very low key. But this also might explain why J. Cole bowed out of the beef. Maybe J. Cole didn't bow out of this beef because he thinks he can't outwrap these guys. He might have bowed out because he was worried about what might be exposed about him in public because he's also notoriously private. He doesn't have any, like, Drake's the only one in the court, in the trio of people who are beefing or maybe in the beef. Drake's probably the only person who we know a lot about, maybe even future, like in, like from like girls and like baby mothers and side pieces and shit, right? They're the only people that we know a lot of stuff about and some of it's true, some of it's false. But the other dudes, we don't really know much, maybe because they're not as famous or because they're quite private. So maybe J. Cole was more worried about people finding out that he likes to fuck strippers or that he's got a million side pieces or something, even though he tries to you know pretend like he's perfect and he's this church dude and a beautiful and, a, and the best husband. Maybe that's what he was worried about. He was worried about the secrets that may come out that he didn't want the public to know about. That's why he bowed out the way he did. Now, if it was me and I was Kendrick, I'm still going to attack you and still reveal those secrets anyway to really bury you. I don't care that you wave the white flag. I'm still going to shoot in the head just to make sure that it's done. Okay, you wave the white flag, cool. But now I'm going to shoot you. So I think that's what he kind of bowed out about because we had, I had never, number one, again, I don't really, you know, I'm, I like Kendrick. I'm not a big Kendrick fan, but I didn't even know his wife was called Whitney. And I had no idea about this rumor that he that she might have fucked the bodyguard. So imagine the kind of stuff that they get up to behind the scene, which again is weird because it shows you just how wrong these guys live in it. That instead of warring with bars and stuff, you're more worried about your secrets getting revealed. So you publicly embarrass yourself and essentially ruin your legacy in hip hop and your ranking as a top MC because you're worried people might find out your secrets and shit about what you get up to in the bedroom or whatever it may be. That's how wrong these guys are living, which kind of brings back to that whole phrase people say in there about whatever you do in the dark will come to light. If you're doing some fuck shit, maybe just stop doing the fuck shit instead of trying to hide the fuck shit. You know, that's what probably you should do. If you're doing some fuck shit and you get exposed, maybe use that as a chance to kind of change your ways. Be like, you know what? I'm going to stop doing this fuck shit because it's bad, because it makes me look horrible. Instead of just trying harder to hide it. <laughs> that's, what, that's what J. Cole did. He's like, look, I'm out. Don't get me. It's almost like you know when you're all, you, you know when you're young and you were dissing each other as friends, especially boys. You're all in a circle ribbing each other, and then you know one person doesn't have any good distance. So like, look, I'm not, I'm not getting involved. I'm not laughing. No, you're here. You have to get involved. If someone gets, you have to snap back. And you know, Jacob basically ran away because he didn't want to snap back or he didn't want anyone to find out that he, I don't know, he smashed some girl on baddies or something. Because that would, that would really ruin J. Cole's image in some people's eyes because he seems to be so perfect and so like, you know, earthy and like, you know, spiritual. If people found out that he fucking smashed Natalie Lunn or something, right? Imagine if somebody, if it came out that J. Cole had an affair with like Natalie Nunn, everyone would be like, what the fuck? If J. Cole smashed Sukiyana or something, you know what I mean? That's probably what he's really nervous about. So he kind of said, you know what? I waved the white flag. I'm not doing this anymore. See you later, guys. Hey, man, drop and give me 50. Hey, drop and give me 50. I love that. I'm going to take your latest girl and cuff it like, cuff it like I'm Ricky. By the way, I think, this is my personal opinion. Can you just agree with me here a little bit? I think it's deplorable when these women 
agree to like partaking in a beef with these guys, rappers. Like imagine Rick Ross was dealing with this one chick um, because they're beefing. Drake DMs the chick and gives her personal tickets, you know, sends her tickets with his signature and shit to come see him at the show. They hang out, all these pictures and stuff. So I hate it when these women willingly get involved in the beef, knowing that, oh, the guy I was previously involved with hates this new guy that's trying to holler at me. Let me get involved. It's really scummy. I think it's bad on both, on all sides, but it's more specifically bad on the woman's side of things. Because it's like, you know how much these guys hate each other because you're dealing with one guy. Why are you getting involved and basically stoking the fires? You know what I mean? It's super lame when they agree to it. I think it's disgusting, really. Like, don't agree to it. Obviously, it's a flex on Drake's part. It looks cool because, you know, you've got Drake's girl and you're at your fucking live show. She's in your box. You're pictured of her afterwards with your arm around her and shit, right? You're doing the whole, like, what's this thing? You're doing the whole fucking, um, uh, what you call it? Benny Butcher thing, right? With, um, what's his name? With Freddie Gibbs's girl. But I think it's lame on the girl's part to partake in the beef, knowing that, the guys that you're talking to have beef themselves is super super lame. Can't believe he jumping in this nigga turning fifty. Every song that made it on a chart he got some jizzy. Spend that little check you gotta stay up out my business, nigga. Shout out to the hooper that be busting out the gritty. We know why you mad, nigga. I ain't even tripping. That's amazing. So Drake allegedly has beef with Ja Morant. Can you believe that? So Drake has beef with Ja Morant for some reason. Right. And allegedly the reason is because John Morant, because Drake, do you remember there was that picture of Drake going on a date with some woman in a baseball stadium? It was some crazy flex. Like Drake went on a date with this woman. I think this is her, right? I forgot her. She's like um I think she's a basketball coach or the mum of a basketball player, I think. That's what her name is. Let's see the let's see the actual picture here. I think I've got it up on my Google here. I think that's the one. I think they're beefing over this woman, which is bizarre because she's old anyway. I think she's in her thirties, so it's not like she's a young girl. But also, if I'm not mistaken, she's like the mum of another basketball player who John Moran is friends with. So I'm like, hold on. If I'm the friend, I'm more annoyed that my friend is trying to bust down my mum than Drake is. Do you know what I mean? So Drake says in that bar, shout out to the Hooper out here busting the gritty. I know why you mad nigga. I ain't even tripping, right? Which is obviously him throwing the jab that he allegedly dated this woman called Joanna Laya, who I think is the mum of a current basketball player who John Moran is friends with. But if you remember directly, Drake was flexing with this woman because, what's her name? Her name is Joanna Lyona, right? They went on a date in like a baseball stadium. He rented an entire baseball stadium. I think TMZ took pictures of it in a helicopter. Yeah, that's the one, see? Look, this is what you, sh this is what you, if you're Kai Cena, I'm sorry, this is what you should be doing. I'm not trying to smash random OnlyFans girls. You should be doing these really fly dates where he rented out this entire baseball stadium and, and had a chef cook up dinner and shit. That's what you should be doing. Not some lame shit like trying to pay an OnlyFans girl five grand to bang. You should be doing this fly ass shit, this player shit. When you've got millions like those guys are doing, this is what you should be doing. Helicopters all above, taking pictures of them, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, I don't know. Drake definitely has to type in it. Drake like, likes his things big and curvy, innit? Because she's, this is a tall woman. She's fucking stacked. She's... <laughs> Drake definitely has a type. <laughs> Jesus Christ, she looks like an assault course. Do you know what I mean? She is an assault course. But yeah, um, I find that insane. They're beefing, isn't it? How, how like why isn't the but why like because I think this Lila woman, she's got a son, if I'm not mistaken. Who's her son? Joanna. What's her name? Joanna. Lila. She's got a son who's a basketball player, I think. Yeah, there you go. See? Her son's a basketball player. And I think he's in the league. So it's like, if I'm Ja Morant, if I'm the son, I'm more pissed at Ja Morant trying to smash my mum as opposed to Drake. Because her and Drake are like age mates because she, I think, had the kid young. So it's like, I don't know. It's all fucking bizarre. It's all weird. It's all wild. But it is what it is. It is what it is. Go back to the track. All that little heartbroken Twitter shit for bitches. This for all the top dog. Drop and give me 50. Drop, drop. And that fucking song, y'all got to not start a beef with us. This shit being brewing in a pot now, I'm heating up. I don't care what cold think that dot shit was weak as fuck. Champagne tripping, he is not fucking easing up. Nigga calling top to see a top, wanna piece it up. Top, wanna piece it up. Top, wanna piece it up. Nah, 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 n
stinking up. Corn by your show money. And that fucking song y'all got to not start a beef with us. One this shit been brewing in a pot now. I'm heating up. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what cold think that dot shit was weak as fuck. Champagne tripping, he is not fucking easy. No, no, no. Nigga calling top to see a top on a piece of the top on a piece of the top on a piece of the nah pussy. Now you on your own when you speaking up. You don't roll deep to this and not fucking deep enough. Begging cops or not, boy, you not fucking beating us. Numbers wise, I'm out of here, you not fucking creeping up. Money wise, I'm out of here, you not fucking sneaking up. Corn by your show money, merch money, feed us. I'ma let you niggas work it out because I seen enough. This ain't even everything I know, don't wait to demon up. This ain't even everything I know, don't wait to demon up. Drop and give me 50 on you fuck niggas teaming up. What the fuck are you smoking on, Patrick? Yeah, drop, drop, drop. Drop a 50 bag for the mob in a spot. Drop a 50 bag, 29 for the car. So, amazing reply back. Big up fucking Drake. I fucking loved it. Hip-hop is fucking back, finally. If anything, I'd say it's 1-1, one, one, or maybe Drake is 1-up now. If you count, this is the first one, but I think it's 1-1 one, one at the moment. If you count like that being number one, I think this is definitely 1-1. One, one. You think he's put everyone on notice. Um, I don't think there's any real beef with them. I'm loving the side beat between Drake and Rick Roll. Rick Roll. Rick Ross trolling each other online. I think that's been super fun to watch, but I don't think it's that serious. Um, it probably is revolving around girls, around money, but mostly around Drake's dominance. They're just tired of it. They're all tired of having to rely on Drake. They're all tired that he's the main guy. They're all tired of the fact that all their bitches are talking about him. Their baby mother's talking about him. Their kids love him. It's just too much. They can't handle it. And they want to bury him. And they want to stab him. And they want to take over. But obviously, he's not relinquishing his power, his control without a fucking fight, which I love. So big up Drake for being a bad boy. Big up Drake for being a fucking bad boy.